how can someone analyze the intelligence of a student through multiple choice questions because the multiple choice questions uh, basically rejects any creative skill or any uh, ability of them it just needs cracking but the neat uh, predicts the eligibility through multiple choice questions how do you see that i think uh, multiple choice questions are standard questions uh, because uh, you have to eliminate three to get the best one that's the concept uh, and it's not only in the neat it's all over the world they are using that uh, multiple choice questions but yes i i won't disagree with you that it should not be for the eligibility test as a uh, sir was saying that uh, when the uh, ugc has said that, that 10 plus 2 should be eligibility for the somebody goes to the higher education there should not be any more entrance but for uh, multiple choice question i think uh, that's the standard uh, used by all over the world and uh, you have to use your uh, mind to eliminate three uh, options to get the right one i have been an examiner and a question paper setter for several years and uh, before that i must tell you that i am a vascular surgeon and mch vascular surgery when i joined it had only two seats the whole state and then for one year it had four seats both attempts i cracked very easily without studying anything believe me i cracked both times first time i cracked i could not join because my child was sick everybody said the country has only four seats and you are giving up that seat i said i'll crack it next year also i cracked it next year also without reading anything believe me ncq is a game if you know how to play this game well you can easily get through this having said this i will tell you how we set the mcqs supposing i have to set 100 mcqs 75 will be easy or average and above average anybody can crack the whole exam depends on the rest of this 25 questions now these 25 questions should be so hard should be so rare that many people cannot attempt it and those who attempt it make a different now how do i select this 25 questions i will go into the minute details in the textbooks and see classes and footnotes and select in other words i myself do not know this answer to these 25 questions i do not know i am a professor and head of the department but i do not know so i select what i do not know and expect the student to know that and the student has not yet joined the course so this is how the mcq game is on mcq is basically to eliminate people not to accommodate people i can understand that mcqs play a role in elimination but if you want to select a good doctor worldwide it has been studied that one mcq exam rarely selects good people oriented doctor there are enough studies on that published in leading medical journals and there are a uh, few questions 5% i think question we make uh, like you know you should skip you should not attempt at all you know like there will be lot of uh, like 5 10 lines question or maybe the answer is uh, very compulsory tricky. negative mark question uh, huh? compulsory negative mark question <laughs> not compulsory you have to skip you if you are skipping you are going to get selected remember that the 5% questions are make it like that that you you have a mind that i should know uh, you like a uh, smart student should know that uh, out of 100 what five question i should not put even a second i should just see that question that is not going to be i am going to attend and i should move you know so 5% question we make uh, like that isn't it sir the yeah, yeah. No, 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 there will be a lot of like it will be 5 10 uh, lines you know you have to spend uh, time to read that question and that question you can do four five more questions okay. and i would like like to add another point to this mcq question um, mcq is a worldwide accepted concept but in uk or in usa or in australia or in china they have medical entrance test but they don't select or they don't set single criteria or single eligibility test for the medical students to get admission they consider their uh, higher secondary examination they consider their extra curricular skills they consider their aptitude skills moreover in uh, in india we have a neat 
which don't even test the aptitude skill but uh, in ucat or in bmat or in mcat or in gamsat they test the aptitude and uh, their comprehensive skills we don't have that i think that is the lagging part uh, no but mm -hmm. nmc has introduced competency based education in now in uh, medical curriculum that is known as cbme and now the exams are based like uh, no, not that uh, you know um, going to be on dependent on the examiner it will be uh, on the objective structure clinical exam that is ASCIs will be there and yes uh, that uh, it is a evolving process and it will take time but I think uh, that medical education will improve uh, times to come. But it is only after we get admission into MBBS. <laughs> yeah, that, that but is to only get admission in see, MBBS, we have to uh, write repeat examinations. Yes, I see the whole whole idea uh, as sir has already said that you no, know, uh, when you studied for twelve years, when you have studied for twelve years, why there should be one more entrance to get your uh, seat, you know, for MBBS seat to eligible. I, I could uh, spare two years because my father was ready to, you know, sponsor me for two more years to study. Or somebody can, as uh, sir said that there were 1,000 uh, students from the Tamil Nadu who attempted three times. There were more students who attempted four times also. So a poor family who doesn't have two square meal to eat, how they can spare a young child who, you know, uh, for four, three, four years to just to write an exam, maybe they will push him to go and earn, you know. That, that's the thing, that's that's very important point uh, you have uh, pointed out. Yes, that is only after, once you enter the… Yes. And uh, I want to hear from Mr. Naveen, though the need is discriminatory, though we know the need is only to eliminate the eligible candidates or eliminate the OBCs, eliminate SC, eliminate ST, there is a huge silence for the past uh, 7 or 10 years. Even before uh, AIMS, we, even before the NEET examination, we had AAPMT, we had AIMS. But that is for very particular number of seats. The AAPMT was conducted for the 50% seats which is being allotted to the All India quota. Not to the 85 percentage seats which is under the regulation and the winding up of the state universities. But the NEET created a chaos into that and made the even though there is a separate list called All India Quota, they made after the, the it, it creates a huge impact after the uh, MBBS got over. Uh, because once the MBBS is over, uh, we can see now that uh, in Tamil Nadu, the number of native doctors working here are declining. The number of non-native doctors are very much increasing. How will that impact the society and why there is a huge silence among the OBC and SEC? and also particularly the intellectual forum. In fact, any protest is a political process. And it was implemented in, I think, 2017. Yes. So in 2017, when in 2014 Modi came with huge margin, there was a message that he is invincible. He can do whatever he thinks. He can destroy anything he wants. One thing. Another thing, it took time to understand this, that it is against SCST, OBC and minority. And it always takes time to gain a momentum uh, against a certain decision of government. It is not only need, it is also about reservation. Government is trying to crush reservation in Uttar Pradesh uh, teachers uh, Hans to Bharti, yeah, uh, reservation was not implemented even a ruling party minister wrote Yogi Adityanath that implement reservation in proper way so it took time again after 2024 verdict it was very comfortable situation for opposition to raise this issue and a mass movement and a mass movement by led by students was not there in the last 10 years. This of this level, when a future of 23 lakh students have been blocked. So there was no base for bigger protest. And today every leader who is pro SCST, OBC, who is pro constitution, who is pro diversity, have been strengthened democratically by election whether you can talk 
अबाउट अखिलेश यादव तेजस्वी और उद्धव ठाकरे और इवन राहुल गांधी मल्लिकार्जुन हु हिमसेल्फ इज दलित दे हैव बिन बिकम स्ट्रोंगर कंपेयर टू 2014 बिकॉज इन 2017 इट वाज हिम सो इट इज वेरी ऑब्वियस आई नो इट इज लेट बट इट हैपेंड and that is a bigger thing i can see uh, aisa sfi and the nsui struggling in the streets even abvp in some places against nta can you see that this is developing as a mass student movement in north india yes it is not only mass movement but also it is an angry movement government cannot afford this anger and it is supported by political base big leaders are supporting this movements students have believed very first time in last 10 years that they are not alone they can fight and they have support whether this is from lawyer fraternity from teacher fraternity from political system from governments by money by parliamentary support we cannot we would have not been imagined before this that both the leader of oppositions in lok sabha and rajya sabha their mic were been uh, were uh, off when they were talking on neat but message was clear on ground that question has been raised and prime minister is silent prime minister is silent or he is running away from parliament or replying anything on neat and biggest thing media is covering this movement yes prime minister narendra modi has lost control over media and the most beautiful thing is this that students are getting support from media from television channels from newspaper from social media and that's why this protest got momentum also from opposition yes, yes. From opposition. so can you take, take it this way the people snatched the majority of bjp first and then they started voicing out yes we can say that okay. because Narendra Modi did CNRC without consent of people Narendra Modi did farmers bill without consent of people Narendra Modi did uh, NRC in Assam without consent of people he was not afraid of anything and he was very clear that he can do anything he can take any decision first time it is message and it is very clear message on ground that no you cannot do anything you are not india we are india students are saying that we are india farmers are saying that we are india so it is prime work minister versus indian republic and there are reports that uh, sang parivar people are involved in this coaching centers coaching mafia yes the students are aware of that you will you will <laughs> you know speaker of lok sabha second time in history after balram jhakhar he became second time speaker of uh, lok sabha he comes from kota and and kota is factory of coachings and his daughter selected uh, got uh, the ias in first attempt so in 2019 just after uh, getting out of college but people are understanding that who is doing why this is happening and the most beautiful thing is this that majority of sc st obc community is understanding that it is war against their future it is war against their dream and they will have to fight along whether they are from tamil nadu whether they are from bihar or whether they are from uttar pradesh rajasthan chhattisgarh i want to add a slightly different dimension to this now imagine some state i don't want to name a state where infant mortality is very high or maternal mortality is very high M- many mothers are dying during delivery that's a problem you said he said now why do they die one the states which are backward in health is also backward in education so many women have their deliveries at home when they come to phcs there are only male doctors and they are upper caste doctors and these women are reluctant to come and that is one of the main reasons for maternal mortality agreed 
now if you want to change this as a planner what will you do you will have to select lot more women to become doctors and lot more women from obc and sc and post them in primary health centers so that they can cater to these women and so that you can reduce mmr so if you really want to reduce maternal mortality rate the state must have the right to select more women or more from dalits more from adivasis etc so that their state's public health need is addressed this is been addressed in america they found that black patients don't come to hospitals because the doctors are white and they were being discriminated against so the government thought about this problem if you don't solve that problem lot of deaths lot of mortalities and morbidities end up in black population and that creates social unrest so purely from a selfish point of view the government decided we will select more black doctors we will select more black women doctors so that this social disturbance can be addressed early so this is the message for all the north indian states if you want to link your public health to medical education every state must have the autonomy to tailor its needs for example next 10 years how many lady doctors i need in bihar how many lady doctors i need in jammu and kashmir or how many ophthalmologists i need in gujarat or how many pediatricians i need in andhra that the particular states have to decide you cannot sit in one place and decide for everybody else if you do that you will have the stark reality of children dying without oxygen and some person taking oxygen put behind bars for 500 days this is the consequence indra has asked the question how the neat will affect the society i think that was your question so see uh, i'll give you one example i think you have seen uh, movie article 21 uh, there was uh, three girls uh, minor girls were raped by upper caste and uh, there were those three girls were dalit and to bury that whole issue uh, and they wanted to bury the whole issue the uh, police and the administration everybody was hell bent to save the culprits only one person who came to rescue of those girl was a dalit doctor a uh, lady doctor because she only went and found that uh, forensic uh, so you have have to have a doctor from your community to help you i'll i'll give you one example of uh, in uh, up we have a japanese encephalitis japanese encephalitis uh, is a disease which if uh, happened to a child either child will die or if he survive he will be like a handicap for life that is the you know consequences of japanese encephalitis is very bad disease and uh, you know uh, it is uh, caused by mosquito mosquito will bite you and uh, transmit the virus to the child now you have a vaccine which is 100% effective the whole uh, Jap- japan from where the japanese encephalitis virus came out or spread all over in world had uh, eliminated uh, japanese encephalitis by introducing vaccine even all over india except some part of uh, uh, tamil nadu that is also uh, near uh, uh, vijayawada area is still there in the iron north U- U- up like uh, northeast up bihar U- uttar pradesh assam and west bengal is still thousands of kids are dying Wha- and when we did uh, who are these kids these kids were all belongs to low socio economic status so the question arises how this mosquito knows that i should bite this child who belongs to low socio economic status and i should not bite that child who is a rich so i i i was wondering when i was working in a brd why all the kids who belongs to you know very poor families especially those uh, people who are uh, living in a uh, slums outside the city you know every city has a uh, outskirt you know whatever you say outcast of people but the people are staying you know uh, you know you go to 
kolkata there is nalpada big uh, you know uh, people and you go to mumbai so why people all the kids belongs to them then we found out that because it's not because of uh, the poverty is because the people who are responsible to give japanese encephalitis vaccine to these people they don't go to that place or they go they give only one dose if when the do two doses are required because they say uh, they are very dirty that place is dirty and uh, you know all the the people are sitting in ac room you know uh, the doctors i'm talking about doctors they they don't go to that area and give uh, vaccine so if if the doctor is from that slum area if the doctor is from that area itself come become a doctor maybe that doctor will give vaccine to the child then only maybe then japanese encephalitis will be eliminated i think this uh, you have answered the question of native doctors versus non native doctors issue sentence. also yeah, only one sentence i want to say it is not enough that you have a adivasi as a president or a scheduled caste as a president a scheduled tribe as a, you must have a lot more adivasis as doctors lot more scheduled caste as doctors lot more scheduled tribe women as doctors neat prevents that and uh, regarding the public health system i think we have discussed enough points about the infrastructure but uh, there are many questions which have which are unanswered or which are yet to be clarified i would like to uh, receive questions from everyone that we need to clarify we means all of us that all of us have to clarify to the nation or to the people or to some sector what are the questions or your opinions that uh, you think it need to be clarified and uh, to eliminate the need or to make the people more aware of the situation there cannot be a one answer or particular answer but a composite effort should be done and we all should understand that if you are fighting for making this society a better place to live if you are fighting to save some principles of democracy and constitution humanity then we will have to fight together it is not just need or an exam or a question of job or some livelihood it is very question of our existence who are we what we want to be what we want to save from whom who are the enemies so we will have to go i want to uh, diverse this question and i just want to say that we will we want better connect to our society we we will have to go to ground we have forgotten to meet people we have forgotten to address people we have forgotten to be questioned and to answer and if you want to make this society a free society we will have to be prepared for more questions and more answers the answer for me for this questions are see uh, i gave you the example what my teacher used to tell for me until unless uh, only three people are oppressed and suppressed in india right now three category uh, first is women whether is belong to dalit whether is belong to rich family whether is belong to muslim community minorities whether is belong to obcs they have been harassed from the the day they come to this life until they go to the you know i read one story maybe i'm you know i told you i talk a lot so i read a story when i was traveling a uh, 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 article in a newspaper that a 60 year old lady felt for the first time that she is entering to the her house okay so for the first time she realized that she is entering to her house is because when she was born 
first question they asked whether he's a boy or girl, on a pen. When she becoming, growing, the mother will give more chicken and meat to the boy, sibling, less to the girl. Discrimination in the house itself. When she becoming little, become teenager, the, she is dominated by her father or the brother. Don't talk here, don't talk there, don't go there, don't do that. When she married, there is one more man in her life who is controlling her, husband. So, all her life, she forgot that she can wear what she wants to. She can eat what she wants to. She can cook what she wants to. All her year, it's not that she, she doesn't have house. For the first time in 60 years, because the husband died and, hus and uh, you know, son went somewhere, for the first time she realized she has her own house. So, as I said, if you really want to change the society, you know, uh, uh, why I said the women are more oppressed, suppressed? Because I have seen the women, you know, HOD, if they become HOD gynecologists, HOD pediatrics, uh, if she is called to a PG, the PG will, you know, curse her after some time. But if a male HOD will t uh, uh, is called a PG, a student, they won't say anything. So she has been harassed, even though she has become a CEO, she become a millionaire, she, she will go anywhere, somebody is there to pray her. So if we want to really, for me, I, I believe, if we want to really uh, become a progress nation, we have to first start respecting women. And we have to take care of the journey. That, that's the question we should ask ourselves, how to take care of the one who is uh, going to give birth to the nation, nation building, uh, you know, building blocks. So the thing, thing, the second oppressor and suppressor is the Dalits. You know, minority will come third, even though I belong to that community, I would say third, because I have seen yeah, in minorities, if you have money, uh, you know, uh, if you, ha you are rich uh, Muslims, you are not being discriminated. I have not been uh, like uh, before the 2017 incident. I never been uh, been taught that I am a Muslim. Uh, you know, petrol become 200 rupees, be, uh, electricity bill will come 30,000. I would never know. You know, uh, you know that uh, you getting my point. That was the uh, that is happening. Uh, uh, yeah, there are uh, happening the mob lynching and the uh, discrimination. That also is happening again. I would say the poor. So the first and foremost, we have to ask ourselves and ask. And it's not only the question we ask. We have to change ourselves and start respecting uh, female or uh, uh, the one who is really. Uh, no, taking care of uh, the nation. See, the five people are sitting, not even one woman in the panel uh, opposing me. That's the question we should ask and we should uh, correct ourselves. We will surely consider the request. Where is the question? Who said that? Who said that? So we have strong connections. We will work on it to build a better nation to us. And yeah, 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 yeah. We will plan it, sir. So da doctor will conclude the session. No, no. Just before ending the panel, I have an appeal to the struggling students of North India, West India, East India, and Central India. My dear students, we started this program by paying our respects to Anita. Please remember, Anita does not belong to Tamil Nadu alone. She belongs to Jammu and Kashmir. She belongs to Gujarat. She belongs to Uttar Pradesh. She belongs to Haryana. She belongs to Ma Madhya Pradesh. She belongs to the toiling community of the India for which you are struggling. And please remember her in your struggles. The people of Tamil Nadu are with you. Above all, the government of Tamil Nadu is with you. Thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>